And that's the experience that you had. And we've had this part of the conversation several times. And it's actually one of my favorite parts of the conversation because I'm, I'm in your camp and also kind of not in your camp, um, mostly because I don't want to be in your camp. But you're probably right. And that is that experience that you have of I am everything and there's nothing outside of me. Right. So if that is the case, if that is the facts, one of my concerns with the spiritual community and, and, and you impacted me in this, because if you would ask me five years ago, the nature of reality, I would have had it probably would have sounded like Ram Dass um, or any of these other gurus that were impactful to me. Right. So if you, if if what you're saying is the truth, then that impacts so many pieces that we hear in the spiritual community reincarnation. Right. If we're just one. And death happens, and now we are part of the eternal, right? We are just that. Well, reincarnations yep. off the table. Yep. Spirit guides are off the table. Yep. Um, a lot of these wooey um concepts that are pretty common in the spiritual community now don't fit. What, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? So I get in a lot of trouble with this one, um, because there's a lot of magical people out there that have you know, spiritual powers. Um, and this is their mantra. This is their, this is their badge of honor. This is their specialty. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's, there's so much here that I'd just love to comment on. And that this is the thing is that the genuine non-dual experience, I think is absolutely destructive of all spiritual and religious belief because yes. it reveals immediately I made a bunch of shit up and then went around behaving as though those things that I just made up were true. And I've been building my life off of these constructs that are simply irrelevant. They just don't exist in any way, shape or form, even yeah. though the gurus tell me, even though the spiritual and religious books tell me this stuff, that it's just not true. Um, so going and, back and, and to not to cut you off, I, I want to throw in, I'm going to get this back because this is the most important piece of where I'm, or one of the most important pieces. My concern is, because this is going to be about integration and proper guidance. My concern is, and I, I will throw myself under the bus too, I was one of those people that thought I knew the nature of reality. So we're sharing that nature of reality with people that are open and they're, they're looking to us as if we had the answers, right? Which is the first mistake of looking at a facilitator, like they know more than you, but that is the case that happens. So now this information is being put into their, their hands. And now they're taking that information as if it's truth. And now they're down this rabbit hole. So what I'm finding in the spiritual community, we have a lot of folks that don't necessarily know. I don't, I have theories. I don't know. It would be wrong for me to tell you the nature of reality when I don't ultimately know it because the amount of time I spent wasted down rabbit holes thinking about some of these things, right? So my concern is in the spiritual community that we're pushing that on people or we're influencing people with this information and a desire to be special as if we know some insight that they don't and we're leading them astray. Sorry to cut you off. That's quite all right. Yeah, so through my own experience that... I, you know, again, seeing, seeing the ego dissolve and then kind of, as you're saying, this is what's also unique about 5MEO. When you get all the way out of the ego, then you do get the opportunity to actually watch it come back and you see there's a layer, there's a layer, there's the stories that I tell myself. Those are the beliefs that I have. Those are the ways that I express myself. And then afterwards, you really clearly see Oh, look, I, I just went into that unconscious pattern again. Like I brought in all that backstory of yes. all that stuff I've made up. And now I'm engaging from that. Why yeah. am I doing that? And so it really puts the ego in your face in that sense that you become hyper aware of what it's yeah. doing. And one of the things that the ego is doing all the time is it's asking, what does this mean? What am I supposed to do? And what, what can I achieve from this? And that's where when, when we use that lens and we look at most spiritual and religious teachings, we can see that what they're doing is they're saying, oh, you're very special because you've got these, you're going to develop these special skills and you're going to get this special knowledge and you're going to understand and see things that other people don't. And then they're going to use that to develop an identity for yourself that sets you apart in some capacity. And it's actually all this feeding back into that sense of self. But if you just see the self as, oh, it's just a temporary configuration of energy that is a person, 
personalized and individualized expression of this universal consciousness, the things that this individualized identity is making up about itself are just that, things that it's making up about itself. Like, so we can take the concept of reincarnation that says, um, I have some kind of immortal soul or some stream of consciousness that is going from life to life. Well, okay, but most reincarnation beliefs also say, and you're on a journey of discovering the truth. And if you behave badly, you're going to get a bad incarnation. If you behave well, you're going to get a good incarnation. Now, here's my list of what counts as good behavior. And here's my list of what counts as bad behavior. <laughs> and this is what's going to get you a good rebirth. And this is what's going to get you a bad rebirth. And then here's also what's going to happen once you've actually figured all this shit out and you've reached this state of enlightenment. And one of the things I love to point out, you know, have, again, having my PhD in religious studies is that you can go to these reincarnation religious traditions that have this belief. None of them agree about what drives reincarnation. None of them agree about what actually is reincarnated. And not a single one of them agree about what is the end result of being enlightened and escaping the cycle of reincarnation. Now, if any of this were true, you would think that there might be actually some consistency among these different traditions. There isn't. There is no consistency. Um, so that's the first clue right there that we're dealing with beliefs because we're not dealing with anything that is consistent that we can objectively observe and say, well, yes, this, this is fundamentally true. So there's this deconstruction that takes place um, through the dismantling of the ego. And there's the letting go of these beliefs and these ideas and the identities that are constructed around them. And especially in modern Western culture, a lot of these beliefs have been adopted from outside. Now, for example, again, with the, the issue of reincarnation, like I live in Ashland, Oregon. It's a big spiritual place. People just assume you believe in reincarnation that, you know, it comes up in conversation all the time or they, or that people believe or assume that you believe that actually your spirit came from another star system to incarnate here on earth in order to be a light bringer or something like that. And it's, I mean, you can just hear the stories being told. So a lot of this stuff is just adopted because it appeals to someone's sense of self in some way, not because they've done rigorous study and said, yes, I accept this is true. It's just like, oh, well, that sounds cool to me. And then they create an identity around it. And then people start dressing that way. And then they start oh, bowing to people and saying namaste. And, you know, they're all doing this and that. And, oh, well, let's do a puja offering or whatever. Let's sing some kirtan. And, you know, it's fine, but all of that, really what it's doing is that it's, is about building a community of like-minded individuals. And we are social animals, human beings. We are animals. Let's just accept it. We are very social in nature and we're very self-referential. Like I was just thinking the other day about how almost everything that humans do is in reference to other humans, right? Where... um you know, we look at art made by other humans. We listen to music made by other humans. We watch TV shows with people talking about their experiences and their relationships. And, you know, everything is like self-referential um, in this interesting way so that we are this very self-reflective kind of animal where we're very fascinated by what humans can do, by what they can create, by what they can make up. And then we want to build communities around that. So it, that's normal and it's natural. Um, that we build these communities of quote unquote like-minded people and build identities around it, but they're all just social constructs. It's just a form of game playing. And 